Good evening and welcome. Today is the hardware build of the Amiga Pi and I've somehow managed to squeeze it into one part. If you wish to view the previous parts, the links are in the description or in the annotations around me. And I apologize for the sound quality in the last part and in this part. So what happened? Well, Doofus over here decided to plug the microphone into the headphone jack instead of the mic socket, didn't she? So it was recording with the internal microphones all this time. However, I have processed the audio so that it's presentable as possible, but rest assured it will be back to normal in the oncoming videos. So come on, let's go build. Good morning. Well, as good as it can be with the rain. I mean, it's uh, not the best of mornings, but let's make the most of it. Stupid freaking miserable cloud. Let's just brighten this place up. Let's begin with getting the soldering station up and running. I have the, the Amiga power supply casing over here. I took the circuitry out last night and I'll put that aside for now because I'm gonna do the, the, the circuitry for this. And uh, hey, the sun's starting to come out now. <laughs> so, okay, even brighter, good. <laughs> this is the stuff I've got, all this stuff is um, the components I put aside, things that I will need and things that I may need. This little thing, I'm not going to show you what it is. If I turn it around, you'll know what it is, but this is a surprise to the end. You know, the problem is with the with the frambuesa is that, I like calling it a frambuesa, <laughs> it's the raspberry in Spanish, <laughs> is that do I cannot find a way to, you know, find the hard drive light on the GPIO output pins. I just don't know which one is for the hard drive. I don't even think you can do that from what I've researched and read around. Now for the reset switch, I have these these jumpers, these headers, sorry, which, uh, you know, you can, you know, solder onto the board and they got a hole there so you can, you know, plug in jumper cables just like this. What I'm going to do is solder the sockets on the on a board and what I've chosen for the board the type of board I've chosen for this is a double-sided matrix board so you can solder on either side of it okay we do not need the data terminals so I have bent them back up just the two middle ones the two center ones the pinout for the um, USB socket and plug is here and ground is this one at the end here so I'll put these connect these onto the board so, so we have US, one USB port, the input solder onto here. Now we just need to start putting the other stuff. We have the second USB port now, which I am uh, soldering in. And the positive here and the negative. Basically what I'm going to do is parallel these two connections, these two sockets, except putting a switch and a capacitor in between them. And Anything else which I want to light up the fan, the light up the fan. <laughs> Anything else which I want to connect up to it, the fan, the um, the LEDs, and things like that. I will put on, you know, this this part because this part because I don't want to use the GPIO, you know, as just for powering, just for indicator lights or fans or things like that because, you know, it will just add strain to the board, strain to the pie itself. So I just rather. So again, on each one, this is the ground, the one on the left, so this is the ground, and that's plus five, plus five. I need to connect the grounds together, which I will do on the underside of the board, and then the plus valves I will do on the top. Okay, so we have the grounds connected now, let's double check up with the continue with continuity tester. I don't know, I never know how to say this word. Okay. Yep, the grounds connect. Because what I'm going to do now is stick a juicy capacitor in between them, 10 volt one. To be honest, I just want there to be a juicy capacitor in the circuit. <laughs> Someone needs to invent and come up with a better design for stupid helping hands. They just annoy me. They either come out of their sockets or they... This is the input. This is what the power goes in here. And this is the output to the Raspberry Pi. So this will be after the switch. Let's thin the switch terminals. The switch wires, sorry. So 
connect, solder this to the positive. Right. I have this old battery bank which, um, you know, I charge it, but it doesn't charge <laughs> even though it actually, you know, powers up. So whatever it is, something is wrong with it, so I can just test it. If something is not right, at least they won't, you know, it'll, if damage this, I won't be crying or something. So this is the power going in, and this is the power coming out. So, so here you can see the LED inside this thing, the red thing, when I switch this on, it switches on. Let's solder the fan in. Okay, so the fan is soldered onto the board now, again. Also, what I'm going to do is put a Piranha LED on it. A Piranha LED is basically this thing. It's like a wide angle sort of LED. Uh, and it's got four pins for some reason, but it's just a negative positive thing going on. So why am I putting those in there? Just to illuminate the inside part of it. I mean, the edges of the USB and everything will be, you know, illuminated and that'll be pretty cool. I mean, I can afford to tap all this stuff off it. The fan and the the LEDs because um, I'm using a power supply which is uh, one of those high wattage chargers it's like about you know 17 watts fast charging thing this fan is going faster by the freaking minute you know what I'm starting to wonder if this fan is rated at three volts instead of five okay now I need to make a rail to the negative as in the ground rail negative rail I make uh, single ones and then I just pair them up All I need to do now is connect the other resistor and that's done. Actually the power LED to the um, the case as well. That's And what I'm going to do is uh, for the power LEDs is I'm going to join two LEDs together and super glue them in the same you know fashion as the original Amiga LEDs that were like uh, conjoined LEDs. So oh, that freaking dazzled me. <laughs> and the fan is there. Yeah, I put uh, I put a, a better fan on there. As in, I put a slightly bigger fan on there that's spinning at a more sensible rate. This is the fan I have on here now. This smaller fan that I had on before just like spun so fast that it felt like that it was trying to freaking take off. What I need to do now is to glue these LEDs together side by side. Okay, I need to put these flat down and then so just will not stick. So smooth. And bond them together. What I need to do now is really push myself out of my comfort zone and uh, is to start uh, doing the soldering job on the the Raspberry Pi itself. So now I have the Pi 3 here. I have the macro lens on and everything is that big which means I'm gonna do some extremely intricate things here <laughs> and attempt to solder um, you know tap off the activity LED which you can see there I'm gonna use one of these headers with two pins there what I'm gonna have to do to it bend those two pins at a right angle and tin them before even you know attempting any of this because I'm gonna have to be extremely still and careful because I am attempting to solder onto my Raspberry Pi and if you want to call me crazy then uh, yeah feel free <laughs> extremely out of my comfort zone I hate this how am I gonna do this okay take a deep breath I need to hold this still to the freaking thing so it doesn't wobble around, move around. Right, so this is the activity LED. This is positive, that is negative. That is the power LED, I'm not gonna touch that. Anybody out there who is watching my video and does surface mount soldering, can you please explain how the freak do you do it? Because I know it's not done by the soldering iron, that's the only part I know. <laughs> I wish my hand would stop shaking. Okay. okay, as far as I know, that is soldered on, even though it's freaking so cockeyed that I need to neaten that up. <gasps> Ow, I just burned myself. Okay, what just happened? I was trying to straighten out, you know, the header. It came off 
I burnt my finger, which you can see there. But the good thing is, the LED came off on the circuit board. So basically, it's that tiny piece. That is the LED snuggly in between the header's legs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna just like take that off. I'm actually glad that that managed to take it off. The reason why is because I don't want the onboard LED to be there taking the current and I don't want to overlord, overlord, overload the um, the actual um, circuit. I'm already going to put two LEDs onto it. One on the board would be the third LED. So, okay, so. Okay, so that header there seems to be on there. I just hope I haven't messed the board up or anything like this. But so far that looks good. So there you have an angled view. I just need to plug this thing in. <laughs> I'm just checking if it freaking works. Yes! It works. Thank goodness. What I need to do is add a reset button. All I need to do, which is nice and simple, is just stick a header in there and just solder it like that. And everything will be fine then. So basically what I did here was the two LEDs that you can see that are joined together, I glued together. I have put... This is going to be the activity LED, the red one. So I have uh, wrapped the positive, bent it around and joined it onto here. And the negative of this one bent it around in the other direction. board I have completed now. I have put everything I need to on it. This is a bit spare over here. I've done everything carefully. Everything is robust. All the joints are good. The power light, which I'm gonna stick inside here. This is the activity light. So let's just do these in here. The good thing is I'll put this on a flat surface so the LEDs level out and I can just glue, uh, hot glue them into place. Make sure there's good metal glue between them so they don't touch each other. This fan is going to be an exhaust fan and it will, the air will be coming out from the top because that's where the air vents are. So while I am here, I will just hot glue this fan into place. I don't want to drill holes into this thing, so I will just hot glue it in so I can act as an exhaust. So there is some sort of, some form of active cooling. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> kind of like so, so solidified quick there, it doesn't move. We've done this, we've done the main board, the power board. I think that took longer than than it should have taken, but um, I guess I'm being extremely careful with this. Okay, so now what all I need to do now is um, measure the the side parts and just find my Dremel tool so I can get it all done today all the hardware stuff so the software stuff I can just you know I can then do that concentrate on that after okay now to the slightly scarier side of things <laughs> first of all what I'm gonna do is since this this one screw thread just this one is in the way of the audio socket there is no other way to do this without blocking a port so what I'm gonna do is just you know chop this off and everything will be happy <laughs> and I can then just measure out you know how big the slits to cut. Okay, that, that kind of, you know, threw itself away. So I have now marked out the pieces which I want, the parts which I want to cut. Okay, so I'm back here and I have smoothened everything out with emery paper. Everything is nice and neat now from the inside and the, the side. This I messed up on. I wanted to kind of cut out uh, a little extra for uh, the reset button here, which I miscalculated, so I cut too much. What I can do with that now is use Milliput, which is like epoxy putty, and uh, I can just mold that into you know, the shape of this and let it set till tomorrow. I'm going to use some Milliput for the cable grip also, as in, you know, just mold a cable grip. And I'll paint over it in acrylic black paint so it doesn't look you know, messy or anything like this. 
what this is basically you have two parts just like epoxy resin and you just mix it up the way I'm mixing this up I feel like I'm shuffling a deck of cards <laughs> okay okay I almost did a nice big juicy style screw up I was gonna use this button for the reset and uh, for some reason my gut instinct says Maddie just test this so I did and it's a freaking push to break, isn't it? Instead of a push to make. So the only push to make I have was this one. <laughs> so I'm so glad <laughs> that the freaking is not constantly on reset. So there we have the millipad in there. Oh, this is, uh... Oh, do you know what I've forgotten? I need to make a little hole here to access the slot for the SD card. <laughs> oh, I just packed the Dremel drill away. <laughs> okay, there is a progress here. I have the USB socket set aside and the line and LAN <laughs> uh, at the back. You can see that I can put the plug in HDMI and the audio. On this side, I have the space to take out, you know, the SD card and put it back in, and that's. That's all I need now. It's kind of a little tricky because you you have to the end part you have to make sure you've given leeway to all the the, 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 the wires and stuff that you're supposed to put in. It's, it's a little tricky. Yeah, any other way this is this is just gonna be a pain. So I need to kind of okay, now it's the time to make the cable grip mold for this thing and uh, to just simply screw it back together because to be honest I've done everything basically I started in the morning took a break then came back again in the afternoon and took a slight break again and I and now it's you know 1 a.m. <laughs> basically it's been like an entire day with with this project and um, I haven't I've only eaten breakfast I have not eaten lunch I've not eaten dinner <laughs> I've not eaten anything and uh, I'm a little hungry but it's too late now to eat so I'm just gonna have some fruit and go to bed and I just <laughs> tomorrow's another day I have something else to do tomorrow I have to install the Hackintosh on that on that uh, PC that I did because I've actually sold it just need to mold this uh, cable grip so tomorrow it will solidify. Uh, let me screw this in first. So the next time I will see you will be when I do the software on this thing, when I start installing this thing and installing all the Amiga emulators and all the retro emulators and my files and everything on this thing. So yeah, so thank you so much for joining me.